So welcome to this tutorial. So the first thing we'll be doing is to measure the neckline. So before even you start th thinking of how to make your collar, you must have made sure of your neck measurement on your bodies. So your your piece, you must have cut out your neck to the right measurement. Now when taking the neckline, we'll measure even the overlapping button hole, the button line. So after doing that, the next thing we're doing is to cut out our our interface, or we call it stay. Over here we call it uh, gum stay. So I'm using a gum stay actually to make the color. So the first thing I'll be doing is to draw a straight line. Then the next thing I will be adjusting the folded part into half the measurement of the neckline. So the neckline I measure was I think 15 and a half. So I'll be adjusting the folded stay into that then I'll be taking one inch which I have done then I'll be measuring three inches from the midpoint that three inches will be the beginning of my curve so I'll be extending the curve to the one inch point I made earlier and then after that I'll be making a a corresponding one inch point all through the new curved line half one inch all through now mind you after making your curve you can always check to confirm if your measurement is still the same as that of your straight line so after doing that I'll be joining all points to get the curve line then i'll be taking one inch inwards from that one inch i'll be making my curve and that that one inch point will be where the upper part of the color will begin from so the next thing we'll be doing is to cut it out so as you can see we made a curve when when we are cutting out this part of the color but back in the days when we cut color most of us we just cut it straight now cutting your color straight with the straight line is good but when you are overlap when both of them overlap one drops lower and it doesn't stay up at the upper part of your neck it goes lower this actually makes it look perfect which you can see so now to cut the upper part of the collar this is actually based on preference because if you want to know it's really based on preference check out most of your ready-made shirts you get from the UK you get from China you get from the US you definitely see that they are all of different sizes so for this experiment I'll be marking up So I'll be marking out 3 inches there, then at the mid part I'll be marking 2.5 inches. Now, normally I usually like to mark out 2.5 inches, then I mark 2 inches. But this customer actually prefers theirs to be big, that's they want the color to stand out. So that's why I say this upper part of the color is actually based on preference. So I'll be taking one in, half inch inward, sorry. Now I'll be joining that point to the initial beginning point to create a line. So as you can see the upper part of that is half inch inward and that is as a result of after you button up the upper part of the collar should not meet each other. There should be like one inch or one and a half inch apart and that's what brings out the beauty of the shirt. So when you take one inch inward after you button up the upper part of the collar doesn't kiss each other it has like a, a distance apart so placing both together you can see what we get actually when you see some people do color they also curve the upper part of the of the color but well, i don't do so and from most of the ready-made uh, prototype i've seen i think the upper part is mostly straight
Now we'll be going straight to the making process of the color and that will be attaching it to the material we'll be using. So use a pressing iron to press it down. So after pressing it down, you cut half inch excess all through. Now the half inch excess I'm cutting at the top is useful and the half inch excess I'll be cutting at the bottom is also useful. But the thing is everything has to be half inch in excess all round. Because there's actually use for every excess you'll be cutting out here. So for the first use, the first thing we'll be doing is to fold the down part of the excess and make sure we are not folding the interface or what we call a stay. So you just fold the cloth and use your pressing iron to hold it. After doing that, you see what we got. So you can always sew it, hold it down by stitching it. You stitch it half inch from the point. So after stitching, that's what I got. So I'll be using it to cut out another piece. And that piece will be what I'll be using to turn it out. And this time, I'll be making my half inch SS's at the down which I folded. Then I'll be following the normal half inch SS's which is already at the top. Now, the half inch SS's at the down, you can make it a little bit bigger than half inch if you don't think you can fold it perfectly. Like you see, I've done, I folded it perfectly, but it is elite, the back piece now is a little bit bigger than the front piece. Because when stitching, I want, after stitching the front piece, it should be able to hold the back piece too. So as you can see, the back piece is a little bit bigger than the front piece. So I'll be sewing all through, but before I do that, I would have already attached the upper part. So we'll go straight into preparation of the upper part of the collar now. We'll start by attaching the upper part of the collar to the material just like we did to the lower part. So after attaching, that's what we got. So we'll be creating a lower a, a back piece that we'll be sewing round to turn out later. But the first thing is to cut out the back piece first. So as you can see, I'll be using the front piece to cut exactly the same measurement for the back piece. So I'll be trimming to make sure the front piece and the back piece are of the same measurement. And the next thing we'll be doing is to sew all through. But before we sew all through, the first thing will be to sew both sides separately. So I've finished sewing both sides separately and I'm doing this because I want to have pointed edges at the tip. So I'll fold, as you can see, I'll fold before I sew the upper part of that top part of the collar. So I'll fold again when getting to the other part. Then I'll notch. After notching, you notch to make it open. Then I'll trim off the SSs. So I'll notch again and trim off the SSs. So when I'm opening to the right face, I'll get like a perfect pointed edge. So as you can see, I've already gotten what I wanted. So after doing that, I pressed then I sew half inch all round. So the next thing I'll be doing will be to get my center point of the upper part of the collar, which I'll notch. So after notching, I'll do the same for the lower piece. So I need the center point. So I'll close off and notch also like I did for the upper part. Now I notch this because I'll be placing both together and and make a stitch. Now you should check where the stay is or your interface is will actually be the front part. So you have to check. 
the interface of the upper part of the color and the interface of the lower part of the B at the same side as the front. So I'll be positioning both notch edge together. Then I'll be sewing at the tip. I will not follow the half inch sewing allowance. I will just sew at the tip. And I'm only just sewing just to hold both together because as you can see, I just sew it at the tip. So it was not even totally firmly held together. You still be seeing gaps as you can see. As you can see there are gaps uh -huh, because I just sew it at the tip just to hold both together. The real sewing will be done after I place the back piece of the lower part which I will be placing now. Then I will follow the half inch allowance I gave earlier. So after placing the back piece, I will follow the half inch sewing allowance I gave earlier. So the only thing I will not do is sew on sew on the interface or the the gum stay so i'll just sew at the edge all through follow the curve and after doing that you can see this is what we got so i finished sewing at the edge of the interface of the gum stay all through then i'll open it up the most important thing is just to understand the process if you understand the process the size of your color is definitely your choice so you make it look as big or as small as you want based on preference so as you can see the color is set the next thing I'll be doing is to use my pressing iron to smoothen it out so subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed So after smoothing it out, you can see what I got. I'll be trimming anything that looks protruding, anything I know after sewing we, we just protrude out and affect what we are doing. So I'll trim anything of excess from the from the inner joining. So as you can see, nothing is protruding again. So I'll just make sure everything is ready for for joining. So I'll just insert the neckline from one point. And I'm starting from the left now. So I'll just insert the neckline inside the collar, but make sure I'm not putting more than half inch inside. You can see it's very easy and I'll just start sewing. So to the other parts and I'll just stop. And that is it. And after doing that, you can do your top stitching if you like, or you can leave it like that if you like. But most definitely your curved part of your collar will come out well. And as you can see, the overlapping of one part of the lower part over the other is not lower and that is the essence of the curve as you can see it is of so standard so this is what we got after we, we are done with the job so once again subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed so thank you for watching god bless so I'll be dropping more videos so you click the notification bell to get notified when new videos drop. And I hope when you do yours, you get better results than what I got here. Just follow the process and I promise everything will come out well. Thank you for watching.